Hello. Today we're at Felbrigg Hall in Felbrigg, Norfolk. Continue our Norfolk uh, holiday here. We are, and uh, Felbrigg Hall, we believe, is a fantastic Jacobean house with an exquisite Georgian interior. So you need to come along and take a look inside this one with us, guys. Shall we go and take a look? Let's go. Built by John Wyndham, Felbrigg Hall is a 17th century English country house. The unaltered Jacobean house is noted for its fine architecture and for its even finer Georgian interior. The last owner of the house was Robert Wyndham Ketton Cramer, who gave the house and its contents to the National Trust in 1969. Originally the kitchen and buttery, the family turned this room into their morning room in the 19th century. On the walls hang many of the family pictures, from adventurers, politicians and entrepreneurs to scholars. They have all left their mark on Felbrigg. The portrait above the door is of William Frederick Wyndham. He enjoyed dressing up in uniform in addition to posing as a London policeman, William often impersonated a train guard whose unauthorised whistle blasts caused confusion on the platforms. In the entrance vestibule there is a particularly fine statue of Hercules. We really appreciated this. We now enter the Great Hall. Here you will find a portrait of the last squire, Robert Wyndham Ketton Cremer. He devoted his life to preserving Felbrigg, finally bequeathing it to the National Trust in 1969. This is a fabulous room with a magnificent ceiling and a wonderful fireplace. Robert was a biographer and a historian he wrote much of his work from the desk in this very room. Here you will find a photograph of his brother and heir, Richard, who tragically died in action during the Second World War. The Victory V, two tree-lined avenues in the park, were created in his memory. From here, a doorway connects the Jacobean house to the 1860s West Wing. We now enter the dining room. It was remodelled by the architect James Payne in the 1750s. The plaster work is by Joseph Rose the Elder. It focuses on natural imagery. It includes four ceiling panels evoking the seasons. The plaster-covered chains on the walls refer to the Wyndham Fetterlock emblem. A large decorative 18th century Chinese screen conceals a doorway that servants would have used to come and go. Robert Ketton became a recluse following the death of two of his sisters. He allowed the estate to fall into disrepair. His heirs had to sell a number of treasures to reverse this decline. One of the paintings that was sold was the Battle of Texel by Van der Velde the Elder. This is now back on loan to the house. In this room you will also see a teapot. It is a gift that was given by Queen Mary. We now enter a sumptuous room known as the Cabinet, formerly the drawing room where the family would withdraw to after meals. It was remodelled in the 1750s to house the pictures that William Wyndham II bought back from his grand tour. It was the fashion for rich young Englishmen to finish their education by touring the continent. William returned from Rome weighed down with books and paintings. Our tour continues in the stone corridor and stair hall. Here you will find a portrait of Agnes Willoughby. 
she married William Frederick Wyndham for his money in 1861. Worried for the family name and fortune, his uncle, General Sir Charles Wyndham, tried to declare him a lunatic. A lengthy court case ensued and the verdict declared William to be sound of mind. As a result of his extravagant spending, the family fortune was eventually lost and Agnes ran off with an Italian opera singer. As you climb this 1750s staircase, look out for the portrait of William Wyndham II. He is wearing a Hungarian hussar's uniform. We are told he was a man of many talents, keen on bookbinding, boat building and firework making. We now enter the library. The books you see in here were collected by the first three William Wyndhams. The books reflect the change in interests throughout the generations, from architecture to science, literature, philosophy and politics. There are over 5,000 books. It is not surprising that the bay window had to be blocked up when the family needed more space and more shelves. There is a secret cupboard in the corner of this room. It was designed for holding a chamber pot. We now view a series of bedrooms. The first is the yellow bedroom. It was repainted as recently as the 1970s to recreate the last squire's mother's bedroom. The rose bedroom has had its colours revived with the replacement of the rose chintz fabric which had unfortunately been severely light damaged. This room is a quintessential English country house bedroom. We now enter the red bedroom. This room remains as it was in the mid-19th century. It is a little faded as the buff stripes were once a candy pink. From here we enter the Chinese bedroom. This was originally two dressing rooms. It was another room remodelled by William Wyndham II. He bought in a specialist to hang his fashionable hand-painted Chinese wallpaper in 1752 at vast expense. As we leave the Chinese bedroom, we enter the West Corridor. This was added in the 1750s to provide access to the bedrooms. Here you will find the first bathroom to be added to the house. It was for the last squire's mother, as she would not move in without one. On display in the kitchen is equipment that would have been used by generations of cooks right up until 1965 when the last squire died. The kitchen houses a gleaming collection of copper pots and a stewing stove. Little has changed since it was created in the early 18th century. So we've just been inside Felbrig Hall we and have. it is absolutely beautiful. Yes, it's lovely. There was a guy playing the piano which added to the atmosphere 
and it did live up to the hype. The Georgian interiors are absolutely beautiful. We really, really enjoyed that. Uh, we're going to take a few steps further on now and take a look at the walled garden. Uh, the lovely guy in there told us that it's looking at its absolute best at the moment. So we'll go and take a look. Let's go. Well guys, we've had an absolutely wonderful visit to Felbrig Hall. Yeah. Uh, we've rounded it off by looking at the walled garden, which is really special. Uh, it's one of the nicest walled gardens we've ever seen. Uh, we thoroughly enjoyed the house too, so it's definitely one to put on your list whenever you visit Norfolk. Yeah. So we hope the video finds you well. We hope you're all uh, having a good time at the moment and we hope you enjoyed this video with us. Give us a like. Please do. Subscribe and ring that bell. And ring that bell. Thanks guys, we'll see you next time. Bye.